and this is Always Cinema Chic. I hope everyone had a really nice new year uh, and I thought this would be the perfect time to put out what I thought were the top movies of 2017. So I'm not going to do a top 10. I thought there were actually way too many great films for that that I wanted to discuss. So it's actually a top 16 uh, of what my favorite were. So, you know, I haven't seen every single movie in 2017 and these really are my personal favorites. So the, these are the movies that stuck out to me that I had a real connection with throughout the year. So, and some of them, you know, when I saw them the first time, it may not add up with the original grade that I gave it because it actually stuck with me and it became something more the more I thought about certain scenes or certain shots or I couldn't get a movie out of my head and that is the case with number 16 which is a ghost story and that stars Rooney Mara and Casey Affleck and that is this kind of low budget minimalism film. It only cost about a hundred thousand dollars to make and it's the story of a husband who dies and then his ghost comes back not to haunt his wife but just to watch over her and there's this weird sense of time in the movie, right? So you go forward hundreds of years, you go backwards in time, and it really is a reflection not just on life, uh, but also love and connection that you have and, and how you know, life has changed throughout thousands of years. So it's not necessarily the movie that I expected going into it. And the more I thought about it, the more I just really loved it. Uh, so coming in at number 15 is Angry Goes West, which I thought was the best comedy, straight up comedy for me. Now it's a super dark comedy. It stars Aubrey Plaza and Elizabeth Olsen. And it's all about this fascination with social media and being obsessed with following certain people and idealizing other people's life and thinking that their life is so much greater than their own. So Aubrey Plaza uh, basically stalks Elizabeth Olsen because she thinks she has the perfect Instagram life in California and she heads all the way out west and they become friends and it is very bizarre. It's very uncomfortable but I could not stop laughing and I thought it was just such a great commentary on the world that we live in right now. All right, coming in at number 14 is The Big Sick and I thought this was the best romantic comedy of the year, although there aren't that many romantic comedies anymore, but this one was great because it was so genuine, it was so realistic. So it's, it stars Kumail Nanjiani and Zoe Kazan, and he wrote the film with his wife. It's about their love story. It's about having two different cultures and backgrounds coming together for a relationship and how that doesn't always work uh, and, and how he kind of thought he wasn't necessarily going to end up with this woman. And then you find out in the end, I mean, it's not a surprise, you find out that they are together. Uh, so it's really, it's funny, it's heartfelt, but it's also genuine, it's not fake, it doesn't fall into those romantic comedy cliches, and I just, I thought it was excellent. Alright, coming in at number 13 is Train Spotting 2. Now, this was not a movie that many people spoke about. The first Train Spotting is, without a doubt, in my top 20 favorite movies of all time. I've seen it so many times. This is one of the movies that actually made me fall in love with cinema and actually start studying cinema. So uh, I was really looking forward to this sequel and it did not disappoint me. And it's a very personal feeling film and just having had these characters in my head, in my life for all of these years and then to see where they are, it was really emotional. I think it was very honest to the characters and who they are. It stars Ewan McGregor. It was directed by Danny Boyle. All of the same actors came back to be a part of the film. It just was, you know, exactly what you wanted it to be. All right, coming in at number 12 is It Comes at Night. And this is one of those thoughtful horror movies that I thought were just so great in 2017. So this didn't do very well. Uh, and a lot of, you know, everyday people didn't particularly like this movie. Uh, it got very high critical response, but I really loved it. I thought that it was very timely. It takes place right after this kind of zombie apocalypse, but that's not the point of the movie. It's more of this internal psychological fear and how once fear gets in our own heads, we really 
we, we can't get rid of it and and it makes us distrust other people even when it seems illogical to distrust others and so it brought up a lot of interesting questions that i i also feel this mo this movie came out at this moment for a very uh specific reason joel edgerton is wonderful in it and then seeing where that character goes by the end of the film is it really is scary so uh coming in at number 11 another thoughtful horror get out. Uh, so I thought this was a wonderful satirical horror film. Um, it, it's, I guess it's, it is funny in parts, but uh, it doesn't fall into any specific genre or category. You go in and you think it's going to be a horror movie and it wasn't. And I was one of those people who, when I saw it, I just thought, oh, this is going to be a horror movie. And then I realized, oh, this definitely isn't at all. And once again, another very timely piece, Jordan Peele just did such a wonderful job directing this. Daniel Kaluuya is wonderful as the lead actor in it. I just, my eyes were affixed to him the whole time. The story is really different and I feel like I never really have seen a film like this before. All right, coming in for the top 10. So number 10 is Logan and I would never have expected that this would have been a movie that I would put on my top 10 for the year, but it just blew me away. It was this kind of Western. I've always loved the X-Men. That's always been my favorite comic book movie to watch. Those are there. They've always been my favorites. And so seeing Wolverine the way Wolverine is meant to be done and it's violent and it's gritty, but it is also heartfelt and very genuine and the relationship that he has with the girl in the film is just, you know, beautiful and that was very unexpected and there were, I, you know, I knew what the ending was going to be, so many people had spoken about it, but that didn't take away the, you know, the, the extreme sadness that I had at the end and I couldn't stop crying and I, I thought it was such an emotional film for something that would be a comic book movie. All right, coming in at number nine is Wind, with Wind River, uh, which stars Elizabeth Olsen and Jeremy Renner. This is a really underrated film. It's done by the same person who wrote Hell or High Water, which was another one of my top 10 favorites from last year. And this is a story of a girl who is murdered on a Native American reservation. Elizabeth Olsen plays the FBI, Jeremy Renner as a kind of tracker. And it was, I just felt like I learned a lot in this film. I had no idea uh, how different the laws were on Native American reservations and what was going on with women. This film actually made me research a lot more to know what was going on uh, with violence against women on reservations and how really the federal government was not able to do anything about it unless it was a murder. So uh, excellent performances all around. Even John Berthal, he's in it for very, very, uh, a very short amount of time, just one scene. And that one scene, I just felt like he stood out so much. So it, it blew me away with how emotional it was and just terrifying. Uh, okay, coming in at number eight is Personal Shopper. And I believe that technically came out in 2016, uh, but it came out in 2017 in America. So we didn't get to see it until then. And this stars Kristen Stewart. And I was blown away by her performance. The story it is about uh, her twin brother who dies, and he was a medium, and he tells her that you know he knew he was going to die. He had a heart. He had a heart disease, um, and he tells her that he's going to leave her signs so that she knows he's okay. And so it. it at moments it feels like this horror movie, but really it's a film about dealing with grief, about finding your identity and separating yourself and knowing who you are. And uh, Kristen Stewart was amazing. And I know there are so many people out there who just think she's the worst human being ever, but you know, you, you have to forgive her for being in Twilight. I've seen her in so many films now, like Camp X-Ray. Um, also, the, the last film that she was in, The Clouds of Sils Marie, 
Maria, they were all excellent and she's proving to be a really good actress when she's in the right roles, you know, the roles that she should be playing. So I thought this was really underrated. I don't know anyone who saw this. I just saw this uh, this past week because I wanted, I wanted to make sure I saw it before the end of the year and I was blown away by it. All right, coming in at number seven is Coco by Disney Pixar. I thought this movie was just, every, it was everything I wanted it to be. It had beautiful music. The artistry with the animation was unlike anything I had ever seen. I thought the color palette, the lighting, it was so gorgeous. Uh, this movie made me cry for quite a bit and it made me look at family in a different way uh, than we're really trained to look at family in America. So I just, uh, I was blown away and I feel that this is one of the best films from Pixar. All right, coming in at number six is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and uh, this stars Frances McDormand. It's written by Mark McDonough. It's directed by Mark McDonough, and it's about a woman whose uh, daughter was raped and killed, and they still haven't found who did it. So she starts prodding the police by putting up these signs, basically antagonizing them to find who her murderer actually is. And there are parts that are very funny, but at the end of the day the message was really all about understanding other people's perspective and how we don't always think of you know someone else's difficulties and they might seem like you know they're a moron but underneath it they might have gone through things that you wouldn't have expected and Frances McDormand just gives a killer performance in this and Sam Rockwell oh he's so he's just so great and I, I really want him to win uh, the Golden Globe Academy Award. I just thought he was so good in this movie. Uh, all right, coming in at number five is The Shape of Water. So I just did a review for this last week and I thought this film was spectacular. It was exactly what I wanted. So it's this very odd mix of a love story and a monster movie and it takes place in 1962 during the Cold War and this mute cleaning woman falls in love with this amphibian creature uh, that they are using, uh, planning to use against the Russians in some way and, you know, testing him. And the, the color palette, the pacing, the acting, Sally Hawkins gives one of the best performances of the year. It was just such a unique vision by Guillermo del Toro, and I think it quite possibly might be his best film that he has ever done. All right, coming in at number four, and now like four, three, two, and one. I, one is untouchable to me, but two, three, and four are sort of interchangeable. I really didn't know what order to put them in because I just love them all so much. So number four, Mother. This movie, when I first saw it, I really loved it, but I... I Notice that there were, you know, things that could have been made better, but the more I think about it, yes, it's a little pretentious at times. Uh, I, I don't care. I just loved it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I got it on Blu-ray. When I watched it again, it was just as incredible as I remembered it feeling. Yeah, there are a few moments where the pacing's not perfect, but you know what? I just enjoyed it so much. It's claustrophobic feeling. I love the way that it's shot. Uh, yeah, everyone talks about all of the biblical allusions and they might be a little bit in your face, but there are a lot of other layers to this film as well. So looking at gender, the roles of men and women, and then looking at the idea of the artist and what you know people who are around artists, what they have to give up in their life and who are the true creators in life. Uh, the performances are all outstanding. I especially love Michelle Pfeiffer in this movie. I, th I think I actually like the first half of the film better than the second half, but this the very end is, you know, unforgettable, I will say. All right, coming in at number three, another film I just saw, Call Me By Your Name. I was blown away. I didn't necessarily think going into this that this was going to be one of my favorite movies of the year. Also, given the current climate, uh, I was a little bit hesitant about a romance that's about a 24-year-old and a 17-year-old, but once you start watching the film and, and you see uh, 
what this 17 year old is really like all of those feelings I had going into the film just completely washed away and it was one of the most beautiful uh, heartbreaking love stories that I, I've seen in quite a long time and this is star making for Timothy Chalamet he was spectacular in it he also had to uh, learn to do so many things he's speaking uh, three languages at times he's playing all of these different instruments throughout the movie I was just so impressed with his performance and Army Hammer 2 a guy that I don't like at all I almost never like him in movies and he was so genuine and real and the connection between the two guys it was just palpable and the the subtleness and the intricacies were all there and even the score was just fantastic I, I will do a review for this in the future but I was just blown away by how beautiful this film was all right coming in at number two is Dunkirk so Chris Nolan made just a spectacular film about the evacuation at Dunkirk he really plays around with time the editing is just so creative the score is out of this world if Hans Zimmer doesn't win for this I mean I, that it would be nuts the score in a lot of ways makes the film it is such an ensemble piece and all of the actors are top-notch Chris Nolan you know has never let me down and this film is no exception all right coming in at number one you guys know exactly what it is so Blade Runner 2049 this film not only is the best film of the year but this is one of the best films that I've ever seen Denny Villeneuve creates something where everything works together for me at least between the color palette the acting the symbolism the soundtrack the lighting every, every shot means something uh, as I found out as I was making these three analysis videos when I saw it the first time I I thought wow this movie was incredible but the more I started to think about it the more I realized that you know every name every image every number means something in the film and I just I can't believe how well thought out the film is the performances are just all incredible and uh, I, I can't believe that this isn't getting noticed as one of the best films of the year for a lot of award shows and a lot of uh, people that I you know look at for top tens I was shocked at how many people didn't put this in their top ten so I don't get it I just think if you love film you you would love this movie so Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear what you guys thought were some of your favorite movies of the year. Remember, this is all based on personal preference, personal opinion. You know, what I love, you may not love, and that's fine. That's the point of film, is to talk about uh, what we love and what we get from it, and really, at the end of the day, how you emotionally connect to it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like the video if you liked it, uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, it is always in fashion to stay in, get dressed up, and make it a cinema chic night. Bye, everyone.